All right. Please be seated. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to another Peaceful Solution uh, Character Education uh, Teacher Certification course. Thank you for being here tonight. And those of you also that are online, um, we are tonight in the overhead here uh, in the respect unit as you can see that's what the cover looks like right there and we've been in the respect unit for a little while now uh, Katan finished up his, on the last class on page 92 I believe it was and I'm going to go over just a couple things real quick you know one of the things uh, which I'd like to mention and just as a reminder for all of us is that we're all striving to be teachers not only are we striving to be teachers of the peaceful solution but we're also students of the peaceful solution and trying to put this to work in our lives uh, in, every day so one of the things that you can bet is that when you teach others how to do this you actually learn yourself how to change your character for the, for the better. Keep that in mind, because the more you can do it, the better it is. All right, so um, on LP4, page D, LP4, page D, that's in chapter four of our respect unit. That's procedure number four. Katan already went through part of this, but about midways it says, uh, have students read Respect Bridges the Gap Between Cultures, which has already been done on pages 91 through 93, and explain to students that when even a few people within our society disregard the rules of respect for others and their property, the result can be violence, crime, and racism. So you're always going to have a, con a consequence for these actions. If you're exhibiting racism, uh, disregarding the rules of society, there's going to be some, some consequences that come your way. You might not see them right away. It might take a while for them to come, but there's going to be consequences. And not only for yourself, but there's going to be things taking place around with others too, because there's a ripple effect that takes place. It just keeps on going and going and going. Um, so we're going to be on page 92. Let's go ahead and turn there. <clears throat> and on page 92 we'll start out with the fourth point and it says give the appropriate greeting Now I think he covered this a little bit right here but it is a polite it, it is polite and mannerly to give the appropriate greeting a simple greeting to your family awaiting you at the dinner table is the right thing to do. I mean, you don't just come in and start screaming at everybody or calling people names and such. You come in and greet everybody kindly. Uh, that also goes along with the next thing. Look at the next point. Being thoughtful of the needs of others. Now, thoughtful is, is thinking about. You're thinking about others, so you're thoughtful. You, you see things. You see people and you, you might see the help. They, they might need some help with something. They might need something. Um, and they might need uh, some encouragement. They might need some moral support, you know. Not, not just physical things, but being thoughtful of the needs of others. So there is a comparison there as to being unthoughtful meaning you're just going about your business, not worry about anything about other people or how they feel or what's going on with them and so forth. All you, you single track one way all the way, you know, hey, I'm going to go do my thing right here. I'm not worried about you. Get out of here. That's unthoughtful. You're not thinking about them. And so how, how could you possibly even help? If you see others with their arms full of packages, open the door for them. Don't just stand and watch someone struggling. If you find a lost item, turn it into the proper authority so that it can be returned to its owner. So there we're looking at some physical aspects of this being thoughtful. But remember, 
even more than the physical sometimes is the the mental and emotional state of people where help is needed and sometimes we're so busy being busy going about doing our own thing that um, uh, we don't really see it we don't really realize what's going on so let's keep in mind other people let's try to be thoughtful you know full of thinking about other people instead of being thoughtless and it continues on and says although concepts of respect and disrespect can vary some behaviors are universally disrespectful so some behaviors are universally uh, around the globe respectful and some are disrespectful for instance being thoughtful to somebody I think that would be considered respectful uh, anywhere Uh, greeting someone kindly would be considered respectful anywhere but at the same time if you go and break someone's window I don't care if you're in you know Russia or Ukraine or United States or Sudan or wherever that's going to be considered disrespectful would you say so so we think about these things and I know William had talked about um, how we trained before going on the on the mission uh, on the on the on the missions we were sent out on um, to meet with people at schools and some of the um, some of the politicians and so forth in Washington and other places before we were even sent out and also to other countries we we learned a little bit about their culture we learned a little bit about what was considered disrespectful and what was considered respectful you know and he talked quite a bit about it uh, so it takes a little effort on our part to show that we're being thoughtful to others about learning about them, you know, before even going and seeing them. You know, interestingly enough, part of that is not just the culture of another country, but even the culture in another area of the United States, for instance. You know, I'm here in Texas. This is the headquarters right here where I'm at in Texas. And... Um, but in other parts of the country you'll find that different cultures require different actions Um, in Washington DC that's its own culture itself and so you've got to learn how to kind of move around there how to get around and uh, talk to people uh, in a certain way not disrespectful by any means though well let's continue on over to page 93 Uh, One of the ways of being disrespectful, and, and, you know, if you think about it, you yourself, if you think about it a while, you can think of many different ways uh, that disrespect has come your way and possibly things that you've done in the past that were disrespectful to people also. Just think about that a minute. You let it kind of go in your head. But... Uh, these are the things that we don't want to do. We're going to cover this list for a minute, but I do want to mention something about respect in general. Now, respect is one of the books that schools probably uh, requested the most. Between self-control and respect, these are the most uh, requested books. And you can't just jump into I mean yeah we're going in there for a 30 minute presentation or an hour or something like that and and you kinda kinda do what you can do and and get out there what you can get to introduce the peaceful solution to the student okay so keep that in mind that, that sometimes what you're doing is you're introducing it to the students so that they can first even have a thought about the peaceful solution or 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 thought about moral character they might not not have even ever thought about it It might not be something that's even in their household or anything okay Um, so so one of the things that we've got to do is uh, keep in mind that that respect as well as self-control as well as many other character traits in fact um, let's uh, let's turn over to let's see I might have a let me check something here. Yeah, let's turn over to page. Well, if you don't have your character unit, you can't. But the character unit on page 14, let me just show that. The positive side of character. Uh, I'm going to read this to you here for a minute. The positive side of character. Now, your character is made up of many different qualities. Respect is one of these things, okay? It's not the totality of it. It's one of these things. They are called 
character traits. So you have all these qualities that work together. I'm going to use the word synergistically. Um, <laughs> so uh, character traits can be either positive or negative based upon your values. So now we're talking about values. Now you can go to page six in your character unit and read all about values. There's a whole lesson there on values. Uh, throughout the peaceful solution, actually, it's so very important. So it's based upon your values, what you've been taught, your choices and experiences, and don't forget about your choices. It's what you choose to do. And then you can't forget about your experiences, everything that you've lived through. I don't know what each and every person here and out there on the Internet has been through in their life. I, I, I don't know. I know some of you. Um, I, know, I know some of the things that you've been through. You all know some of the things that I've been through and so forth. But I don't know everything. So we all have experiences that are uniquely uh, um, ours that help us to be able to, like, get the message across. Uh, I know that... Uh, uh, William, uh, he's not shy about it by any means, but he spent some time incarcerated, uh, uh, quite a bit of time, and during that time it helped him to be able to communicate with others that had been incarcerated and know what they had gone through and, and, and kind of have a connection with them, right? So our experiences help us to connect with other people. So all these things go together. The key to having moral character is to develop positive character traits. And, of course, it says to develop them. That means we have to work on it. It has to grow. We have to, we have to uh, feed it. Okay? So we have to develop this. It doesn't just occur overnight. So when you demonstrate these traits on a consistent basis, you'll be known as a person of character. Now, that's the positive side of character, and, and I wanted to mention this, that respect is one of those things, uh, one of those qualities that makes up that great moral character that we're looking for and that we want to teach, okay? So now that we've got that, let's go back page 92 here, 93. Let's go ahead and start out on the top of the page with the first point. Now this is the following behaviors that are considered disrespectful. Physical abuse. This includes violent and aggressive behavior such as hitting, pushing, kicking, or using any other means of force against another person. So think about that a moment. Violent and aggressive behavior hitting, pushing, kicking. Now, hopefully, as adults, we're not getting into that too much, but I do see in children sometimes, it's kind of like a, a knee-jerk reaction to where someone does something to them and they in turn do something to them. You know, they retaliate. You pushed me, I push you. And it's something that, that has to be worked out. It's something that that children need to be taught, they need to be shown why they should not do that. Not just, hey, stop doing that, go to the corner, or do this, you know. I mean, you want to explain to them why you, that they should not do this. And this is the thing about the peaceful solution, is that in every aspect that the peaceful solution teaches, every trait that it teaches, it goes into detail about why you should and why you should not do certain things. And that's how we learn and grow. It's not just someone saying, stop it, and then giving you some punishment. It's actually teaching. That's what we want to do. We want to guide. We want to lead. We want to teach. You know, that's different than, than like ruling. Okay, and as a teacher, you don't want to be a, quote, ruler. You want to be a, a, a teacher, a lead, a guide, okay? Now, while physical abuse is quite bad, um, I'd like to point out something else. If you could show the overhead, please. Take a look at that. Can everybody see it? Can you see what that is? It's like a, it, it's like a fist coming out of his mouth, okay? You got that? See? It's an arm and a fist coming out and punching him in the face right there but it's made up of words. It's coming out of his mouth. It's not a real fist. Do you see that right there? Okay, that's what verbal abuse is like. And 
it's been said, and there's been studies done, where people that have had a lot of verbal abuse have said that, you know, I would have rather been beat than have that verbal abuse all my life that I had. Because the beatings, the scars from beatings and the physical abuse like that, a lot of times you can get over a lot easier. I mean, I, I think back myself, I think back to times when uh, I might have been involved in something or, or for some reason somebody was attacking me physically. And that was a whole lot easier to deal with than... Um, than physical abuse, uh, uh, verbal abuse. The verbal abuse, I, I remember. I, I remember how it affected my mind. I remember how it popped up from time to time in my memory and how I thought, well, was I the person that was in the wrong on this or were, were they in the wrong? Did, did I do something to deserve that? Was this, you know, all of these doubts and questions and things that, that throughout life, I mean, things that occurred to me back when I was a child or a teenager. I know others go through this too, these things that we grew up with, these experiences that pop into our mind. And some of the most, some of the most memorable ones are the things that hurt the hurtful things that was said to us, you know? So verbal abuse is a very important thing to work at, at not doing. And this includes cursing, teasing, putting others down by making fun of their physical cor cor characteristics and nationality and so forth. But the, the teasing and putting others down, you know, this is something that is really like taught out in the workplace. Uh, for people who are not practicing the peaceful solution, it's a common thing to cut each other down in the workplace. Teasing, put downs, you know. Uh, I can get one up on you, you know, I put you down, you put me down, you laugh about it, everybody standing around laughs about it, you know. <clears throat> and that's something that is something we shouldn't do, but some of us grew up with that all our life, and it's kind of hard to get out of our system. It's kind of hard to get out of our heart and our mind and change. So this is one of the things that you know we work on, and, and as we do these things, we don't kick ourselves too hard, right? Remember some of the past lessons where we have to leave ourselves room to grow, and, and that's what we do. We work on it, and we continue trying to improve, okay? Now, bullet or point number three, stealing or damaging someone else's possessions. Ownership is a universal concept, and in all cultures, people have the right to have possessions and to use and protect the things that they own. Um, yes, un ownership is universal, and nobody wants to be stolen from. And this is what it means by it being universal, because again, it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what neighborhood you live in. It doesn't matter what city, what state, what country, what continent. It, it doesn't matter, you know, what planet you live on. <laughs> it, it's ownership is universal. Everybody owns things, and nobody wants anything stolen from them. I don't know of anyone who have who has ever answered that question when asked. You know, do you like it when someone steals from you? I only know of one or two people that ever raised their hand and said yes, and it was just because they were trying to get a laugh or, um, you know, maybe somebody was mentally deranged and was waiting for someone to steal from them so they could shoot them or something, you know. Um, so that would be the only ones that ever did it. No one wants to be stolen from in all cultures. So these are things that bridge the gap. If you go back to page 91 real quick, these are the things that the, the respect, it bridges the gap between the cultures. It bridges the gap between people, between nationalities, between different um, um, <laughs> levels of society or stature or so forth, you know. It, it, it bridges the gap between the, the, um, the wealthy and the poor. It bridges the gap between the worker and the manager. It bridges the gap between everybody. Specifically, this is talking about cultures tonight, but I do like to add that reminder in there that, that respect bridges that gap with everybody, okay? 
it, it, it's needed always. So let's look at point number four, rude or crude behavior. Now this includes not being dressed appropriately or exposing private body parts in public places, which is done quite often, uh, especially you know in entertainment and the movies and so forth. It's all also considered rude and disrespectful to look at someone of the opposite gender in, in you know, a way you shouldn't, uh, making these uh, comments and, and jokes in their presence, you know. Uh, it should not be done. That's not a great thing to do. And it leads to, it leads to more problems. Remember, if you're doing these things that we shouldn't do, it's going to lead to consequences. Once again, you might not see them right away. If the consequences occurred right away, think about this. If, if the consequences for calling someone a derogatory name, if those consequences came on you right away, you would probably not be likely to continue doing it. Because you know that the minute I say that, bam, something's going to occur, whatever it is. You know, you get shocked, you get hit, <laughs> something, you know. Some consequences are going to come your way. And, 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 and you probably would stop doing it. Similar to, as an example, taking a, a, you know, a metallic object and sticking in a light socket, and <laughs> you, know, you get the consequence right away. Now, I know some people say, oh, I can do that and live with it and everything, but a lot of people die like that, just from something as simple as that household current, and, and the conditions are all right, and they get electrocuted. So that's not something people go around doing all the time because the consequences come pretty much right away. Does that make sense? I mean, okay, so, so we, we want to think about the things that we do. We, we, want to, um, we want to consider these things. And uh, in bullet point number five, or point number five, it's not a bullet point, but... Disregarding the position of one in authority is also a very disrespectful thing. You know, you have to consider that whatever authority there is, there is an authority over that person and an authority over that person too, and then an authority over that person. I mean, you got to think about it. There's authority over everyone. And so by disregarding the position of one in authority, you're kind of proving that uh, you're not capable of having much authority if you disrespect and disregard the position of someone in authority. And so in every culture this exists. There are authority figures and leaders who guide and direct others. Now get that. Who guide and direct others. Now, there are authority figures that don't do the the job properly, and they would be more called you know rulers ruling over people, um, but leaders and guides who direct others, parents, teachers, government officials are some of the few examples of authority figures. And if you flip over to uh, page sixty two in your respect unit, page sixty two. This goes into a little bit of detail about respecting authority. It, the title of the page is Who's in Charge? And sometimes it might not be clear who's in charge, but we need to find out before doing things. We need to find out who's in charge and get the proper uh, clearance to do whatever it is that we're wanting to do. So respecting others also involves respecting authority. An authority figure is anybody who is placed in a position of being in charge of your safety and well-being. Yeah, um, you might not consider like your your supervisor at work or something to be in charge of your safety and well-being, but they really are. The responsibility of the things that take place is on their shoulders, as well as the things that you're responsible for and you have authority for, and then the authority is on the shoulders of the person that's that's in authority over the supervisor, over the department manager, over the, you know, it just keeps on going. So, of course, your parents and teachers, they're authority figures, but have you considered that an older brother or sister can be? Uh, authority figures also include, you know, coaches, school bus driver, police, um, etc. And the important thing to remember is that an authority figure is there to guide, direct, and protect you. They deserve your respect. 
not always will we find that everybody fits that mold. Everybody deserves your respect, but everybody might not be giving it. Sometimes authority figures can be disrespectful too. That doesn't mean that we have the right to be disrespectful to them. We need to be respectful with everybody because everybody deserves respect. Bear in mind always that an authority figure should never ask you to participate in anything that is morally incorrect. If that should occur, you must always choose to say no or speak to someone you trust about the situation. Because they... They're not going to ask you. An authority figure that is properly guiding and teaching and directing and practicing the peaceful solution is not going to ask you to do anything that's morally incorrect. Now, you can show respect for an authority figure by being courteous and polite. And in addition, you should follow the instructions and rules set by those who are in authority. And I had a note down here about rules, but this states it pretty well. Rules are given to keep things running smoothly and to keep people safe. All right? And that's what rules are for. Rules are for our protection, and not only ours, but everybody's protection. We've got to have rules for society to run properly. We have to have rules in a business for that business to run properly. We have to have rules in a school for the school to run properly. We even have rules right here on this stage that that we work with to help things run smoothly. So rules are very important. Now, um, <clears throat> point number six. Displaying hand gestures that are considered vulgar. This is disrespectful. This is just another one of those things. In fact, if you think about it for a moment, um, uh, now, now this is where things really change depending upon what country you're in. There are certain hand gestures that are considered vulgar in every culture, every society. But then there are others that you wouldn't even think. Now you could, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, doing examples of them here tonight to show you, but you could move your hand in a certain way or have a certain few fingers held up at, a, at a, any given time, and it might be considered disrespectful in one culture where it isn't to you. Um, in fact, um, one comes to mind in, um, uh, where... You know, it involves the arm and the elbow and some hand gestures, uh, you know, escaping from uh, your face area that that is is really not very respectful in this one particular culture and, and, and possibly more. But in this one that I can think of, especially. And if you think about it, there, there will be things. In fact, at one time in the Peaceful Solution, we had a book when we were training to meet with um, uh, I think it was the third global conference on peace that was held right here at the headquarters of the Peaceful Solution. This has been a few years back, and more than a few actually, and when everybody was training to meet the dignitaries that came in from other countries, we, we studied everybody. Everybody that had anything to do with being here uh, at the headquarters on that day, uh, or those couple days, they all had to study these uh, gestures, hand gestures, face gestures, um, body language, and so forth, so we could make sure that we weren't making others feel uncomfortable by doing disrespectful things. It's so very important that, we sh that we're thoughtful of others and learn about them before we even meet them. Uh, a little bit ago, I was talking about going to... Um, to DC and talking to some of the the dignitaries there and some of the, you know the politicians and so forth and one of the things that we did is we learned about those that we were going to see so we knew something about them you know nobody would go and uh to a job interview and without knowing something about the job they were going to right i mean maybe someone would i don't think so though uh, you'd want to know what kind of job you were going for. You would want to know what company it was and possibly a little bit about the company. You're going to find out how much they pay, right? But you want to find out also what, what they're about. And then if you know who you're going to see, like the CEO of the company or something or, or whatever the case might be, you would want to learn a little bit about that individual and what he's looking for in, in employees, he or she is looking for in employees. So... 
that's one of the things to do and that shows respect actually it doesn't show that you're being deceitful in any manner or anything like that you're showing respect by learning about that individual learning about their likes and dislikes and and um and possibly what you have in common to make a connection all right so point number i think it's number seven and also the last point on the page is disregarding rules. Now, we just got through reading about rules and why they're important. They're for our protection. They're to make things run smoothly. So public places, public places have rules that govern behavior and proper conduct. For instance, there are many places such as malls, restaurants, so forth, that have rules prohibiting smoking, loud music, and shoving while waiting in line. And for any of you that are old enough to remember when smoking was uh, normal in public places. Do you remember that? Do you, do you remember how it was? I remember a, a car dealership that I worked at. It was you know, three, four-story glass, just real big. You could probably fit 25 cars inside of the showroom. And it had three entrances. And late at night, when the salespeople had nothing better to do from... You know, the, the action kind of slowed down about 7.30 or 8 o'clock, but sometimes they were there till 10 or so. And so the ones that were there were smoking like a freight train. And you wouldn't notice being in there all day, but the place was filled with smoke. I saw people open the door to this big old huge showroom, open the door, and the smoke hit them in the face, and they shut the door and turned and went the other way. I mean, that's pretty pretty gross. I didn't think anything about it then, actually thought it was a little bit funny, you know, but now you look back and say, you know what, that was gross. And then I think about, uh, you know, sitting in a, a restaurant, a fancy restaurant, and people just smoking away right at the next table or same table or all throughout, and just smoke is just filling the room. I mean, that kind of takes away a little bit of the atmosphere of the smell of the food and so forth. And then you got people hacking and coughing because they're smoking and, you know, coughing up stuff right there at their table and you're trying to eat. I mean, is that gross or what? So um, public places now have rules that prohibit the smoking and, of course, loud music and so forth, too. And, and you wouldn't want to have confrontations in a lot of pub, in public places uh, causing... Uh, chaos. So, rules of proper behavior instruct and guide all people, regardless of their different cultural beliefs, to interact with respect and consideration. In order for all members of society to function to the best of their ability, they must have a secure environment in which to live. And that's what we all want. We do want peace and safety. We do want a secure environment. We do want to go home and and not have to worry about our stuff being stolen, uh, you know, our house set on fire, our, our, you know, our dog killed or something. I mean, we, we, we want to feel safe. When members of society treat each other disrespectfully, the result is anger, fear, hatred, aggression, and violence. And sometimes the, these things do occur right away. Sometimes there are consequences immediately that take place for these actions when you're disrespectful. Sometimes. Not always, though. Sometimes it takes a little while. You know, people have, uh, um, you know, even neighbors, uh, you know, neighborhood there, you have people right next door to each other, and uh, ongoing disrespect being shown by neighbors builds a wall builds conflict, builds uh, anger, builds uh, holding grudges, and so forth. And then one day it kind of all explodes. You know, it doesn't go away. It builds and builds and builds until it explodes. So anybody who's ever lived around anybody else and nearby, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And it really doesn't have to be all that nearby, too. You know, there's always property uh, conflicts, people saying, uh, you built a fence on my property, they might, they might look over there 10 acres away and see a fence being built, and they go over there, and some guys on their property, uh, a foot over onto their property, building the, the fence, that's gonna, there's gonna be a conflict there, that's disrespectful. They should have built over on their own side, you know? 
changing the markers of, 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 the, uh, of the ground. You know, you can't do that. Well, so keeping in mind that, that the character that we're working towards is comprised of all these things combined, you know, working together synergistically and so forth. And we've already looked in the respect unit and we looked at what respect was, right? We started out, what is respect? What's the value of it? What is what's it about, right? And then we learned how to respect ourselves because before you can respect anybody else, you've got to have respect for yourself too. And you might think, eh, respect ourselves? What do you mean? I surely I respect myself. Well, well, no. We have to learn to respect ourselves. I mean, there's so many things we need to learn to respect ourselves physically. We need to learn to respect ourselves by uh, physically, by the way we dress, by the way we take care of ourselves, and so forth. We need to learn to respect ourselves by the things we say, the things we say to other people, and the things we do, showing respect to ourselves and others. Isn't it funny though? When you show respect to yourself you are also showing respect to others also so and we did learn how also to respect others you know we've been through those lessons and now we got to put them to work in our life right and now we're learning about respect and society in general and you know society well let's um let's go ahead and let me see here real quick uh, let's go ahead and turn back to lesson plan four, page D, for just a minute in your respect unit. And we're going to go to exploring disrespect in society on pages 94 and 96 in your handbook and complete the accompanying exercise on page 96. And we'll do that if we can, but ask for a few volunteers to share their answers. We, we won't be doing that tonight because we don't have the capability to do that. But um, So all this bridging the gap, the cultures, between cultures and, and society in general, we've talked a lot about society already. And on page 94, if you turn there, this is called Exploring Disrespect in Society. And sadly, disrespectful behavior has become, become commonplace in our society. Whether you witness this behavior on television, at the movies, at school, at the mall, what have you, it is no longer surprising to see people dressed inappropriately, disrespecting authority figures, being rude, using vulgar hand gestures, etc. And so let's take a closer look at the common ways people disrespect others in society. But page 86... Page 86 in your book, in the Respect Units, is Understanding Society and Culture. So I, I just wanted to read this top part as a reminder. In general, the word society refers to a community, you know, a broad group of people who work together for a common purpose and have collective activities and interests. And I believe Catan went over some differences about you know, society and community and so forth, if I remember one of the last couple classes. And um, this is the definition, though. Society refers to a community or broad group of people who work together for a common purpose and have collective activities and interests. The common purpose of a society, whether small, large, simple, or complex, is to function for the survival and benefit of all its members. And we've already talked about even small towns, like uh, the small town that, that I live in, uh, people have different jobs. They have, the, the, you know, people have learned to how to be plumbers and electricians and barbers and cooks and um, landscapers and mechanics and, I mean, you could go on and on. So, so every city, every town, every little group of people has a variety of folks doing different things. Not everybody does the same job. And so we have to show respect instead of disrespect in dealing with these people. You know, it's easy to become desensitized. Uh, it mentioned the television and movies and so forth, forth, this behavior, this disrespectful behavior. And I want to show you this real quick on the overhead. Um, desensitize. Uh, you can become desensitized. And desensitize means to render insensitive or less sensitive. But look at number three, if you can read it, uh, to make emotionally, this is important, to make emotionally insensitive or unresponsive as by long exposure or repeated shocks. 
So if you go back to the first time you ever saw something on the TV or movies or something, or, or even in real life that was shocking, something that you really hadn't seen before, and it, it, it really shocked you. I remember the, uh, I remember, excuse me, I remember the, uh, uh, you know, I'm not trying to get anybody to go watch this or anything, but there was a movie about a shark one time when I was in uh, high school. And a movie about a shark came out, and the most shocking thing that was seen was when this shark bit off people's body parts and they went floating through the water. It was it was shocking to see that on the movie screen. No, uh, nobody had really ever seen anything quite that graphic before. Um, you know, possibly some things that came close to it, but people were throwing up and all kinds of stuff. It was very shocking to them. But you know, nowadays, I don't think it would be shocking to anybody at all to see that in the movies. I, I think they've become much more graphic. Um, even even 20 years ago, I, I remember movies, they, they, were, they were just getting much more graphic with these things about shooting people and seeing the blood splatter and so forth and so on. So, so as time goes on, if you're watching these things, you become desensitized, which is, look at the overhead again, to make emotionally insensitive or unresponsive. So now you're unresponsive to these things. You're not shocked by it anymore, as by long exposure or repeated shocks, okay? Keep that in mind, because that's what it does. When we see, when we see these things, whether it be movies, videos, um, video games included in that, they're, I hear that they're pretty graphic. And so you are being desensitized and becoming like a normal everyday thing and it really doesn't bother you anymore. You could walk by someone on the street laying their blood all over the place and everything and not even think twice about it. Well, um, so it's no longer surprising to see people dressed inappropriately, disrespecting authority figures, being rude, using vulgar hand gestures. Let's take a closer look at the common ways people disrespect others in society. <clears throat> okay. So violence and aggression. Violence and aggression can exist in two forms. You have verbal and physical. Um, did you know that derogatory negative remarks about someone's skin color, nationality, physical appearance, as well as threatening to hurt someone are forms of verbal violence and abuse? That's right. Words can be violent. Whoever said words couldn't hurt was wrong. Words do hurt and can result in lifelong emotional scars. I'll just show you that again. The picture, uh, we were talking about bridging the gap between cultures before, and now we're talking about in society in general, words do hurt. They're, they're, they can be very hurtful, and people will remember those and have those scars much longer than they would the physical abuse that could take place. Now, verbal threats and insults can leave victims feeling humiliated, scared, anxious, frustrated, or angry. And if you think about it, if you think about it, people who have, uh, and I know uh, some individuals that I've heard a lot of stories, I've, I've, I've talked to a lot of people that that are in prison, I've talked to victims of things that took place uh, with the the prisoners um, uh, and, and I'm not um, I'm not um, advocating for for either party or anything what I'm saying is it doesn't matter who you are and what you've done the the verbal threats and insults and and so forth are with you all your life and and I have seen victims of violent threats and attacks that never even were touched not even touched but the threat was there the gun was pointed or whatever and all their life they've been scared and fearful of you know the particular situation that that brought that about and, and the situation could have been something as simple as walking out of the grocery store and getting in your car and, and and every time they relive it when they do that when they go to the grocery store and walk out and get in their car they relive that horrid moment the victim of a of a crime that involves something like that you know someone coming up to their car or what have you you follow that it stays with them all their life and so 
<clears throat> so it's not something to take lightly. Verbal threats and insults can leave victims feeling humiliated, scared, anxious, frustrated, or angry. And in addition to this, verbal abuse is usually the precursor to physical aggression, which of course would be what that is. I, I read an article or saw it on the news not too long ago about a busy shopping center on a Saturday afternoon and uh, a woman, an older woman, I think she was in her 70s or 80s, but she had gone into the store and came out and got in her car and somebody abducted her in broad daylight, you know, it's like one or two o'clock in the afternoon, busy, busy, busy place. and so you're not safe anywhere <laughs> um but they abducted her and and killed her you know and, and this is something that that turk that that there were there were verbal threats first probably like get in the car or something like that you know and then it was a precursor to the physical aggression but also you can now that's kind of like an immediate thing but you can also take that another level and think about how verbal threats and insults like uh, bullying for instance let's just take bullying let's take school situation where people are bullied and it's verbal at first and then over a period of time then it turns into a physical thing and that occurs in the workplace at school um, and all around society um, to use physical so uh, force against someone with either a fist a kick or a weapon is one of the worst and most dangerous forms of disrespect. Violence and aggression contribute to our high crime rate and can range from pushing someone in the hallway at school to rape, assault, assault with a deadly weapon, and murder such as school shootings. Violent behavior can be witnessed in many communities in schools and homes. And if you were able to if you were able to uh, take part in the one day event that we had here at the Peaceful Solution headquarters um, to where we had a, a full day of, of people giving their story, you know, telling us their story about how they got involved in the Peaceful Solution and giving us their, the story about their life and different things that were taking place around the world and in the United States uh, with the Peaceful Solution. To, to let everyone see what was going on and get get the whole picture. If you were here, then you you were able to see some of these things. You were able to witness uh, by seeing it on the screen um, the violent behavior that might have turned peaceful. Uh, you could see people that were violent that showed what the peaceful solution did for them in their life and turned them away from violence and so forth. So. This is something. Um, this is something that uh, was also shown. Uh, was a little bit about uh, the school shootings that take place and the violence out there in different parts of the nation and the globe, and why the peaceful solution is needed to be taught. You know, everywhere. Yeah, there's um, there's character education programs out there, and uh, it's kind of like um, it's it's kind of like someone telling you to stop we talked about that earlier you know someone someone sees you doing something and they say hey stop that and they send you to get punished but it, but it doesn't really change anything if if the punishment worked then the prisons would be you know just just wonderful places because they would be punishing uh, people that had committed crimes and they would get out and never commit crimes anymore well punishment doesn't work teaching, guiding, leading, and showing people why they should not do something is what works. And that's what changes the heart and mind. And that's what we need to do. And that's why the Peaceful Solution is here. And that's why we want to become teachers of the Peaceful Solution also. One of the things that we have to do to, to be able to, uh, to be a teacher of the Peaceful Solution and to have this really work in our life is earlier on in the respect unit in fact it's back in chapter three but it talks about respecting others and how we have a responsibility to show respect to everybody and how familiar familiarity should breed respect and you know getting to know others and then communicating respectfully now a little bit of time was spent on this <clears throat> and uh, one of the points i'd like to mention is 
to help avoid violent confrontations, to help uh, to help learn to show respect in society instead of disrespect, and with others of whatever culture, you know, some of the things we've gone over tonight, you should learn to, we should learn to communicate respectfully. And on page 55 of our respect unit, you can see at the top of the page, it talks about, and, and there's whole there, there's whole sections on this about our body language and tone of voice and so forth, but over half of our communication skills are based upon body language alone. You got that? Over half. That means that since it's over half, the words we say don't even come close to being half because there's other ways to communicate also. Remember the, the tone of voice, huge, huge thing. You know, people can tell if you're upset by your tone of voice, right? They don't have to hear the words you're saying. They can know you're upset just by that tone. Or if they see you, even a deaf person can look at you and see your facial features and your body language and see if you're upset or not, right? Or if you're glad or so forth and so on. Or if you're depressed, you know, they can see those things. So communicating respectfully, and you avoid a lot of these things that take place in these conflicts. Um, so communication is another aspect of showing respect to others. We communicate in many different ways. The most common form is by speaking, but you also communicate with your body language and facial expressions. And um, uh, here's an example. For example, crossing your hands and slumping into your chair tells others that you don't want to hear what they have to say. <laughs> now, think about that one for a minute, and we use this example a lot, but think about it. So you're slumped down in the chair and, and got your hands crossed and your head down and everything, just, just uh, sitting there and you're all depressed and despondent and all, and someone comes up to you and says, you know, hey, is everything okay? Is something wrong? And, you know, is something wrong? No. <laughs> Nothing's wrong. <laughs> you know? Well, come on, man. They know by your tone of voice. That your, your words don't matter at this point. They know by your tone of voice. They know by the sound you're making. They know by the look on your face. And they know by your body language that something's definitely wrong. Right? So keep that in mind when we're exploring how to show respect rather than disrespect with people. Whether it be in society, uh, in general... In, in the town you live in and so forth, or if it's between cultures, you know, different nationalities, different religions, whatever the case might be, different age groups, different uh, societal levels, you know, uh, again, uh, whatever, you know, the rich and poor and so forth, you know, uh, it respect bridges that gap between people in general. Um, I'd like to continue on for just a moment here. The uh, the two most common forms. This page on on page ninety five, and let's see on on the lesson plan. Uh, the the bottom of um, procedure number four actually goes through page ninety six, and I don't think we're going to get all the way here tonight to that. But uh, page ninety five, if you will. The two most common forms of violence in the home are domestic violence and child abuse. Both of these result in terrible consequences to the individual and to society. And research shows that over 6.9 million children suffer from parental abuse each year. In addition to this, there are 29 million physical attacks each year made by older siblings on younger. And if many of these same attacks had occurred outside of the home, they would have been classified as assault and battery. Research also shows that 50% of all married women will experience violence in the form of slapping, shoving, being kicked, and so forth, and at least one-third of the women affected by domestic violence are repeatedly beaten. <clears throat> that's, um, that's some amazing statistics. 6.9 million children suffer from parental abuse each year. That is a lot. I can't even picture that, that, that many. That's just unbelievable. And then 29 million physical attacks each year made by older siblings, by you know brothers and sisters on the younger brothers and sisters. Really? I mean, physical attacks, not just, uh, not just you know, a little bit of 
Uh, well, you know, it, it all qualifies, I guess. And we need to stop the pushing and shoving and, and wrestling around. Um, crimes in the form of robberies, stabbings, rapes, shootings, and killings are also examples of ways people are disrespected in society. Think about it. Respect is to have care and concern for others and to hold them in high regard. Any person who would willfully and intentionally hurt others or steal their possessions is not showing care, concern, or regard, and crime hurts society by creating an atmosphere of insecurity, hate, mistrust, and fear. And it might not even be right away. It might take a while to build. But you can see the little chart right there, crime rates on the rise, and there's a fact at the bottom that says preschool children exposed to the verbal and physical abuse of their mothers are more likely to exhibit negative and aggressive behavior. We're going to stop right there, and we'll take up uh, on Wednesday, 42623 at 5.30 p.m., and we'll start on this page again. Page 95, we'll go over it briefly and then continue on. I look forward to everybody being there here at headquarters and on the internet. Uh, so we look forward once again, 42623, Wednesday, this Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. We'll be continuing in the respect unit, and we look forward to seeing everybody at that time. Thank you for coming. <laughs>